Hello and welcome back to the farm. It's uh, getting towards the end of spring and uh, I am heading back from the shop and uh, you might notice this is something a little bit new we're driving in. Let me get into the farm here and I'll show you. Uh, because our 4240 has gone in for a service uh, and as it's going to be a little while, we've hired this for a few days. So this is a brand new John Deere 6110M. Uh, it should be a useful little tractor for us around the farm. Uh, it's As I said, it's going to be taking on the duties that the uh, 4240 uh, has been doing. It's only uh, only for a short period of time, unless I, uh, I, of course, decide to switch this out. But with all the money we're spending on tractors and things at the moment, this would be a bit of an expense I can't afford. So uh, yeah, we're we're just we're just using it temporarily, but we're going to hook it up to our front loader, and we're also going to hook up a bale spike to it because the first thing we need to do today is uh, we've got to do some work with our animals. So our animals need feeding; they need some more straw, uh, and so we're going to be getting this six M and our six R out together, and. Um, and using these two uh, to, to basically get this work done. Uh, I'm going to grab while I'm here. Won't hook up any of the other stuff. But just so we don't have to run back down here with the 6M. Oh, the 6R, sorry, to get this. We're just going to hook this up. Like so. There we go. So yeah, this would be a useful little yard tractor for us. It is a brand spanking new. They go for about $110,000 to $120,000. So yeah, it would be quite an outlay for us to do it. We don't need to hook up any cables. Uh, so yeah, it would be a good it would be a good little tractor to eventually replace the 4240 with. I think we need what we'd really need is a uh, uh, is a time when uh, well when that 4240 eventually goes uh, that would be the best time for it and uh, and giving us a full upgrade uh, but at the moment we're good we're looking at uh, getting something with a little more oomph on the farm so uh, yeah and and ATAR is uh, is looking to be our next purchase which is going to be a lot of money um, we, are, we actually have one lined up for trial uh, in the future. Uh, one of the new tracked ones. So we are we are just waiting for that, really. So at the moment, we're going to be... Uh, we're, not, we're not looking to replace this. Now, what I have hired this with, because I knew I was going to be doing f um, mostly front loader work on it. I did get a set of wheel weights on it. So we're, we're not needing to put our rear weight on it today. So let's uh, let's get in here, and get ourselves a couple of bales, like so, perfect. And we're going to put these into our bale shredder, and uh, and then hook the six R up to that, and uh, and go and use that to do that. Uh, and this is why we uh, we got the six R, so that we were able to basically run two tractors doing this job and not need to use the ramp so much anymore. We can still use the ramp to load this stuff up. Here's our 6215R. There we go. And uh, and yeah, as well as being a great field tractor this, it's also a great tractor for us to uh, do things like shredding bales with. We tend to we tend to run two tractors around the yard like this. By the way, what do you guys think of the uh, the 6M we've got? Do you think that's a, a good little tractor for us to have around here? Do you think it would make a good replacement for our 4240? I'm just going to turn it off. Because, uh, yeah. We need to turn it off. We don't need to turn this off, though. Right, and we're going to go and blow some straw in for our cows. But I think I think it's a great uh, a great little tractor. Certainly a good one. If I could find if I could find a second hand one, that'd be great. Or an ex demo one, actually. Um, they're a little too new to find a um, a second hand one at this point. I mean, this is a I think this is a 2014. Uh, this six R. So you can you can see the sort of age I look at to to get tractors and stuff. 
Let's not blow this into the cows themselves. But that would be good. And that would be both bales emptied in there. We might need a little bit more looking at this. Uh, but that should certainly do them for now. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think a, a, a 6M would be good. Um, it's, again, it's a little bit out of our price range at the moment. Our uh, 7R is there. Yeah. Uh, and that is actually, that's, that's a similar age, I think. That's a few years old. Bought that second hand as well. So it's really, we don't have the money on the farm to, to splash out for lots of tractors. Uh, let's go and put this back. We want to do the uh, mixed ration next, TMR next. Be good. And then we're going to hook up the uh, little uh, water tank to it and uh, and get that done as well um but uh yeah uh, I, I think that would be a great little addition if we don't uh well if we don't spend a huge amount of money or we don't have a um we don't go a little bit mad after the harvest uh maybe that would be a good uh, addition to the farm the 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 4240 is getting a little bit old but not so old that uh it, it's not useful as a yard tractor uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how much its uh, expense comes back after the latest. Um, after it's had its um, uh, after it's had its service, and evaluate it then. But I'm I'm intrigued as to what you guys think. I'm intrigued as to to what your thoughts on that new six M are. So let me have uh, let me have your comments. We are going to go and empty. Actually, we're going to go. We'll empty the last of this mixed ration out. We need to. Oh, I need to get the skid steer down here first before we go any further. Get that. Uh, get that cleaned up. Actually, no, I won't worry about that. I'll. Uh, I'll clean that up in a minute. We want to put more TMR in here. Get these guys done. So empty it out. There we go. And I'll take that, and then we'll uh, we'll go and fill this up with some more. Just a little bit in the bottom I wanted to clear out of this before we went any further. And, uh, and yeah, we're going to go and cut open one of these uh, silage bales. So, uh, ideally, I want to do uh, 20, 23,000, 4,000 a bale. Uh, we basically want to do two two and one i think it won't fill the mixing wagon up but then uh, we don't need to fill the mixing wagon up today and um, what i did so this is when i need the ramp because this anderson is quite big uh, and uh, and it helps for us to be able to see what we're doing so like that there and we'll get it mixing and i should be in a good place for no we need to be back ever so slightly There we go. That should do it. Right, so that is now mixing. I am going to open this up. And this is where the ramp just comes in useful for us to, to get that little bit of extra height. Now, even with a tractor like this, it's a, it's a good thing to do. So we'll open up this silage bale and this one. There we go. Cut those open. And then we can just stack on top of each other. Uh, like that. And then both of these can go in at once. Like so. So yeah, 16, 20,000 of these, which uh, of doing five bales, which means that we won't quite fill it, um, but it will be enough for us to go and feed the cows this time. And springtime, yeah, well, this should fit on here. I think we measured this properly. Yeah, look, there we go. Yeah, we've got plenty of space to get on the ramp. So we keep in the middle and we're all good. And then up. Good visibility on this little John Deere. Really good. So much nicer, again, than our 4240. Just, ooh. Let's, I always go in there like that. 
Yeah, because this, this nice open bit at the front, absolutely perfect for that. Uh, allows us to see so, so much more. And into here. So yeah, 2-2 two, two and 1 uh, is the mixing ratio I use for hay, silage and uh, straw. Obviously we've gone straw, silage, hay. Uh, sorry, straw... So we've got silage, hay, straw in this load. But you get the idea. And yeah, the visibility on this little tractor and how smooth this little tractor is, is really good. I'm liking it a lot. So let's... Uh, let's get this loaded up as well. So let's get this in. Oh, put my handbrake on. I want to get... There we go. It's getting it so that we don't catch the uh, the pallet... Uh, sorry, the uh, bail spike. But that's worked. Uh, that's worked really nicely. Let's see how full we are. Uh, yeah, we have 20,000, which is what I thought. Uh, so basically 4,000 short. Uh, we could put, we could have put another straw bale in here. To be honest, uh, it would it would be just under uh, the match, and so yeah, uh, let's do this. Bring it round and empty it out. Oh no, actually into the trough would be a good place to do it. There we go. And then we'll clear this up after that. And there we go. They are all done. So we're going to get this back over. Uh, yeah, we're going to park this back up. Oh, behind us was where we had it before. Uh, and then I'm going to get our little JCB skid steer out. And uh, and we'll get this, uh, this cleaned up. So job to the skid steer. And we're just getting ourselves uh, the bucket on the front here. Uh, so this should be a little, uh, a short, a uh, little bit. I, I I find this skid steer useful to still have around the farm. It's great for manoeuvring bales and things. We obviously don't use it to load up any of our stuff anymore. Uh, it's much more useful to have a tractor on that with it with a larger reach. Uh, but having this little New Holland skid steer around here is is still useful for. For clearing up in the yard and things like that. And it's, it adds a little bit of extra visibility. We don't otherwise get. Um, now we do have a silo setup that allows us to uh, pick this up and put it, uh, put it into the silo. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, and when we, uh, when we need to get some more. When we get to a certain amount what we do. Yeah, you've got 400 litres here. Uh, we plonk it. Uh, we get, rather than uh, unwrapping one of our silage bales, uh, we just come up to our silo here and uh, and empty that out. And I'm constantly looking at the possibility of extending and uh, and updating my silos. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, we're just uh, in here, which is a bit of an odd thing, but uh, it works well. So I'm, I'm really pleased with that setup. Uh, and the other thing we need to do today, and we're going to take the 6M to go and do this as well, is uh, is give the cows some water too. So we'll put this back, because this basically lives under this shed here. Uh, also, yeah, this little skid steer, absolutely perfect for when we are wrapping uh, grass bales. Our last unload didn't work so well, but uh, yeah, we uh, when we're wrapping the silage... Uh, wrapping grass bales into these uh, long silage snakes. Uh, it's great to have this here because normally the, the 4240, which we'd use for this, um, that will be out on the field doing rowing and collecting and stuff like that. So, yeah. It's uh, it's one of those uh, one of those things that uh, makes more sense to do it that way. And, uh, yeah, so that's the thing. I am looking at the possibility of getting rid of the bucket here. We never use the bucket on our front loaders. Um, 
because we're always we're always using the bucket on the um, on the little uh, skid steer rather than the bucket on here. So when I return this and uh, and go and pick up our 4240, I think it might be wise for me to uh, go and drop off the um, uh, go and drop off the bucket and, and see if we can get that sold as well at the same time. There we go. And out. There we are. And we take this over this way here. And get our trailer filled up. So we always fill from the pond by backing this in here. I'm looking at the possibility of getting a larger water tanker at the moment. We, we tend to, if our water on our cows gets too low, we tend to end up uh, having to make four trips with this. Uh, so I tend to try and, and make a, 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 a trip every morning and a trip in the evening to, to try and keep the water topped up at all times. But it's, uh, yeah, if uh, if we're unable to for whatever reason, then it, it can take quite a few trips from this. Thankfully today, we're on top of it. We're, uh, this should be more of a top up rather than a, uh, rather than a total, um, a total refill. Uh, I just wanted to give this tractor a go at doing all the jobs that our 4240 does and, uh, and sort of, get it to do that it has a hundred and i'm trying to remember what the horsepower we got on this version is i'm guessing it's about 100 and i think it might be 130 horsepower on this tractor i think they come in at 130 and 140 horsepower variants and the uh, uh 6110 uh, is the 130 horsepower variant if i remember uh, i'm sure somebody will correct me in the uh in the comments if uh, not but uh, yeah i'm fairly sure of that let's empty this out and there we go they're going to take all of that which is good that means they needed their trough needed that oh always fun getting out of here because the cows like to crowd around me a little bit hopefully they don't come too far down this end most of the time they're, they're yeah they're, they're very chill they uh, they don't really care about me coming in but it's to the point where i have to watch where i'm driving because otherwise a cow gets in the way right there we go and we just reverse this straight out and straight into that shed is what i'm gonna do but i think a uh, yeah i think a larger water tanker is gonna help us on the farm so i'm gonna look at doing that i think so lots of little upgrades i want to do on here we've got the money to do it at the moment uh should work out pretty well i think uh but that should be the animal jobs done for today. So we're going to take this 6M round to, uh, round to the shed. And, uh, and we're going to switch out uh, to our 7R, which is already plugged up to our new John Deere Cedar. Uh, and we're going to take that and do field 21 and maybe field 19. We, we Basically, we need to get the corn in today. So that's that's what I'm aiming to do. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But there we are. And, uh, and that will do for now. Let's head over here. And this cedar... I'm, I'm glad we don't have long roads or anything to go on the cedar because it's, yeah, the cedar can be a pain. Right, we've got corn in here. Perfect. I knew that uh, I knew that Chris had been getting the whole thing ready for us. And yeah, there is no way we have to get this cedar uh, to fold up or anything. So we have to, thankfully with the farm, the only thing we have to do on the farm being to cross here... It's very tight with the cedar. I don't like going through this gateway. You have to get it pretty much exact. And hope that you've got no traffic coming. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'm out one side. And I'm out the other. Perfect. There we go. 
So, yeah, we're going to uh, go and do this field here. Right, so, I think, Chris, I think we did a test row at the end here. Uh, not great to be driving on it, but um, not much I can do about that at the moment. So, let's uh, get our cedar on and down. Uh, and I'm going to set a GPS course, so I want to turn my GPS on. Get myself nicely lined up. Uh, set my first point, which I think I've done. I am seeding, which is good. Yeah, there we go. And, uh, and yeah, this 7R works really, really nicely with this. Just sort of runs very, very smoothly. And you get the idea. It's, uh, yeah. And this is a bit of an odd-shaped field. But should work out fine for us. Uh, everything will line up. And we go down and away. So there we go. We're going to get this seeded with corn. We've got this and field 19 to do. Uh, should get both of those done fairly easy today. Uh, so uh, I'm going to get to it. One thing I want to do for a while is give you guys a little bit of uh, history of the farm and, uh, and what everything means around here. So uh, the farm here, as I said, uh, as I told you guys a few times before, uh, is uh, is fourth? I'm a fourth generation farmer on here. Um, the farm uh, was originally purchased by my great grandfather uh, and uh, and built it up. Uh, and originally uh, he bought a, a a big farm here, uh, and it ended up being a uh, it ended up being split into two farms. Um, for, for my grandfather and my great uncles uh, to farm. And my great uncle died without any children. So it then reverted back to, uh, to my father who farmed this as one big farm. Uh, and, uh, and so that's this farm here and the, uh, the farm you can see at the edge here. Uh, and the whole thing at the time was integrated into... Uh, uh, into being a, uh, a single farm uh, and my dad as well he was a, he was an only child so both my grandfather so my, my grandfather and my great uncle um, were, uh, were uh, farmed this as two farms my dad farmed it as a single farm because it was just him and he was the only person who could who could take over the whole thing and these days now uh, it's back to being two farms again. Um, but obviously, having been done as a single farm for so long, um, basically, it's uh, uh, there's there's no obvious borders between them. So my sister and I far essentially farm it as two separate farms: uh, her and her husband, and uh, uh, and me. So uh, my far my part of the farm is is sort of up to this roadway uh, up here that's a that's a roadway down to their farm uh, and they they have this roadway here to our to our right as part of their farm um uh it gives me access to the bga that's in the middle and it's actually a so it's a it's sort of a public private road uh this one I'm going through the middle here because everybody who uses the bga in the local area uh needs access to it uh, so there's access via this road here uh, and then uh, my land comes up to this dividing road here and that that goes all the way across to the main road up there um, and then they farm uh, everything over that way and uh, and yeah and uh, have quite a nice little farm he uh, he prefers a uh, case to John Deere so they have uh, they have case tractors that they run stuff with uh, whereas I'm uh, much more of a John Deere person, uh, and so they they tend to have newer stuff on their farm because they uh, because they replaced 
Well, basically, uh, because he didn't want to take John Deere machinery, uh, it all sort of came my way uh, when we split the farms. I'm going to have to reverse up a little bit and deal with that patch. Uh, so, yeah, they have a they, they run a, a case setup, uh, whereas I run John Deere one. There we go. Yeah, that'll get it. It's always, uh, if you don't get your headlands right sometimes, it can be a bit tricky. But uh, we've got, we're going to have a little patch of, uh, of double seeding there, I think. Right, there we go. Get back on track. And down. And then we can get this properly seeded there. There we go. Um, so, yeah, as I said, they run a, they run a, a fully case set up to our John Deere one. Um, but uh, from time to time, we need help. Uh, and you saw that uh, in our uh, sort of a year or so ago, when my sister came and helped out with us doing the um, doing the harvest, and uh, and yeah, so we we help out with them. As you can see, they do do some different crops for us. I think those are those potatoes they're growing in there at the moment. Let's go pop out. Yeah, so they're doing uh, they're doing potatoes on there at the moment. They um. Uh, they also have pigs as opposed to um, our our cows, our, uh, our our cow setups. So uh, yeah, they they tend to grow slightly different crops in order to make sure that they can um, they can do pigs well. And that has got this done. I'll turn that off. And uh, and yeah, so uh, theirs is uh, down here in the the trees. They're they're sort of that way. And uh, and yeah, it works well for us. Uh, we did pick up, so it was a kind of an agreement with us when we bought field seventeen because that wasn't originally part of the farm. Uh, we decided uh, to approach them about picking up field nineteen as well. Because it's easier and, and much more part of our farm than it is part of theirs. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, they agreed to that. So that's why we now have access to this. They do have access to it. I mean, you can see there's a, a roadway there. Probably should have come that way. But I can't. This, this can be a really tricky cedar to sort. There we go. Right, and I want to reset my GPS. But uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty cool um, how we uh, we all work together to make sure our farms uh, we get the best out of our farms. Right, we are putting corn in here as well. Uh, we want to set our first point on our GPS, which I think we've done. Yes, we have, and we're all on and everything. Perfect. Uh, and we'll get this field done as well. I'm very much thinking of doing. Um, some grass into these fields there I think that might work better for us um, but yeah it's it's a, a nice family affair around here well this field has gone pretty well I'm just lining up for what I'm not sure is going to be our, it might be our last row just want to get it lined yeah like that is it going to leave any yeah, it's going to leave a very small patch at the side. So what we'll do is we'll get that uh, sorted. I'm just going to back up a little bit. Make sure we get right at the beginning of this row. Lift. And down again. Yeah. So we'll have to come back up this side here quickly just to uh, to finish that off. It's so really amazing that the field 21 fits this cedar perfectly. This field, not so much. But it's all right. We'll turn off most of the... Uh, most of the seeding uh, rows, and uh, and we'll be good. We'll be uh, we'll be okay. So let's lift this, and with no need of our GPS anymore. So we'll turn that off. That way, I won't accidentally hit uh, the GPS course. And just line this up and get this headland done, nice and smoothly. And then we'll have to do a quick run again. We'll have to turn some rows off and uh, and get that running. That is all good. Yeah, there we are. So plenty of uh, seeds still in the tank. So that's good news. 
and we are uh, we're in a great position to get this field finished off and uh, and that will be our seeding done for the year this is the last crop we need to get in uh it's gonna be a fairly well it's not the latest for the corn uh you know we can we can plant corn right up to midsummer so yeah it's not it's, it's sort of a, a mid planting of corn this We'll see how we go as far as actually being able to harvest it. Uh, it should be good. We tend to, I tend to sell corn off to, um, off to my sister because obviously it's useful for her for feeding pigs. So that's uh, that's where some of our corn goes. The rest gets, uh, the rest gets sold. Oh, there we are. And, uh, and helps us to make some money. And in we go. Back it up. And away we go. So I've turned off uh, most of our seeding rows now. And we're just, we're just running sort of three at the side there make sure that we can uh, to do this last little bit uh it's all good like that um i'm done so turn that off uh and yeah you can see this is the uh, so that's the track down to their farm down there and we are heading around here and as I said this cedar is wide but we should be able to get it we can get it through all this here and the easiest way into our yard is down through this road here just check we've got no traffic we are not we're good across here and into our yard oh yeah, maneuvering this is a bit of a pain. I am, uh, despite the fact that we've bought, we've only just bought this. I am, I am looking at it and going, I'm not sure it is the greatest choice we've got for our yard, but we'll see. We'll see where we go with it. Uh, but that is pretty much it for me today because I don't have anything else to do around the farm. I'm packing up and going to go and have some supper. Uh, so uh, I will leave it here. Uh, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from the farm, please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.